Good evening and welcome to another episode of the Perceptive Podcast here on Game Wisdom, where he's on the RN science of games. I am Josh Placer, and we have not one but three developers on for this week's show. We're going to be talking with Bit9 Studio, who at the time of this recording have just released their game Terror Bane. Which, if you guys are watching the recording of this podcast, it should we should have a play of it, or we have checked it out on one of our Wednesday night streams. So, since we have a full house over to my right here, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. So, everyone, feel free. Well, okay. Um, thanks for having us here. <laughs> First of all, yeah. yeah. Thanks for having us. Um, yeah, of course. Thank you. So... We are Bit9 Studio. Uh, my name is Andrea Leoni. I am story writer for the studio. And my name is Matteo Leoni. I'm his brother and uh, uh, the and graphic I'm... designer behind Terrorband. <laughs> and I'm Luca Spazzoli, project manager and lead programmer. All right. It's great to have all you guys here. And as well as just like trying to get our overlays and everything <laughs> together, of course. <laughs> but... It's always tricky. <laughs> But, but uh, thank you guys for agreeing to come on and for hanging out with me this afternoon. I know we have a time zone. You guys are based out of Italy, right? Yep. Yeah. It's all Italian team. Yes. Yeah. Nice. And we're in, in, it's night outside right now. <laughs> <laughs> from the other side of the globe. Um, yeah. Uh, we're based in Italy near Bologna. And um, we... We operate here, and it's it's been kind of a strange uh, thing making games in Italy. It's very different than uh, making games in more uh, known places in, uh, for example, America or for the industry. Yeah, for the exactly. industry, yes. Yeah. Um, we have a very different infrastructure, but we've managed to to break through and and find a more international audience, and we're very very proud of this of that. Right. And I think that you are my first uh, developer so I've spoken to from Italy as well. I've had a chance to speak to developers all over. And it's always great to speak oh. to somebody from a new country. Or new country <laughs> that for me, at least. <laughs> That's a new for you. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank so, you very much. It's an honor. Yeah, not a problem. And I guess to start things off, before we kind of get into the nitty-gritty about Terrorbane, uh, can you talk a little bit about you know your respective backgrounds when it comes to game dev? And then uh, for people listening to us recorded, what's kind of the elevator pitch for Terrorbane? Terrorbane. Oh, well, I'll start with the with the kind of snippet of what Terrorbane is. Then we all go and, and, and present ourselves. Uh, Terrorbane is a game about game development in a way. Uh, you start out and you are a player playing a game, a game made by a developer, and he is a character in the game uh, that you interact with directly, kind of like the narrator from Stanley Parable. And uh, he wants you to play his latest product, his latest game, and uh, he says that this game he's made is the best game ever made. There won't be another one that will be better than this. Uh, he's very wrong, however, and <laughs> his game is actually filled to the brim with glitches and bugs and nothing you see works the way it's intended. And actually you discover this is a funny comedy game. Uh, you need to use the bugs to your advantage and find them all, all around the world and try to reach the end credit scene. <laughs> so that was the premise behind the game. Yeah. Uh, as for what we do, Matteo? Well, um, we started with mobile games, little mobile games, while we were uh, actually studying the Unity environment, which we used to develop Terrorbank. And we start back in 2014. 14, 14, 14. Yeah. 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 Um, Terrabin is our first uh, project. Uh, commercial yeah. project. Yeah, commercial, commercially, yeah. And it's kind of a big, <laughs> it's kind of a big release for us because we were used to making smaller mobile mm -hmm. titles. And um, yeah, uh, as for the team, uh, I am, as I said, the story writer. Um, um, and I wrote all the dialogue, all the characters and all the, and the setting for the game. I also, if you've played the game, you might have recognized my voice. I also voice the developer character in-game. <laughs> and... Um, Matteo? 
Uh, I obviously everything you see in the game is drawn by me somehow and I also took care of part of the music you'll be hearing playing the game and Luca is obviously a yeah, a I'm, I'm a, a computer science engineer. Uh, I don't have a specific background uh, in game development because I didn't study that specifically. Uh, but I'm also the project manager, and we, um, besides that, we we designed the game all together. The game design is made by the three of us. Yeah. And we work we, together from from the get go. Yeah. From the get go to create to make the design of the game. While well, Luca, we can say, is the backbone because are, he is the programmer. <laughs> we are obviously in love with the media of video games. Yeah, video games have been for all our lives. Yeah, we've been passionate gamers all of our lives. Yeah, and uh, that have... is reflected in the game in many yeah. ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was an afternoon, I believe. We we decided to why don't we make a game. <laughs> <laughs> Game and that started, was the yeah, first decision yeah. in our lives. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I hope not. No, it was actually a wonderful journey. Yeah, it was yeah. a hard but but wonderful journey. And um, yeah, that's our story. Great. And how long did everyone spend on Terrabane? Like, how long has it been in development for? Terrabane has been in development for five years. A uh, very long time. A very long time for an indie game, but mm -hmm. it's... Yeah, even more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kind of even more, because we prototyped it uh, in sometime in 2016. Uh, yeah. And then we started development a few months later after we, we decided th that but, this concept was the right but one. But wrestling with, uh, with day jobs, so... <laughs> day jobs. That, yeah. that made it longer, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> There's also... Uh, the fault of that long development cycle is also in part because of the the, the design. We, we might end up talking about it later, probably if there are questions that, that go specifically towards that. Uh, basically, Terrabane changes gameplay a lot. So whenever we... Um, we could not reiterate a lot on one single mm. gameplay concept. So we had to change rules and teach the player... Uh, new rules. New rules every time we changed everything. So it it, it was a long cycle uh, trying to achieve that. But we're proud of what we did. Uh, hopefully the players will will uh, will enjoy what we finally uh, came up with. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's always challenging when games get into like kind of like that long form development in terms of like human motivation and especially with a game that you're trying to do a lot of different things with it so mm -hmm. i guess with terror bane what has been i guess like in terms of like having these different kinds of systems or these different kinds of gameplay elements i guess how did you decide like what you wanted to put into this game versus you know what you're able to do with this being your first commercial project Hmm. Yeah, we mainly went with what we liked, to be <laughs> completely honest. Uh, we are, as a, as a trio, very focused on comedy. Uh, so we went with the idea, let's, of course, manage our resources correctly and make sure that we can do the best we can with the resources we have. But beyond that, let's try and fit everything we think is awesome and good and makes us laugh uh, because this is going to be our best shot we want to we want it we want this game to be the best possible game we can make even if we have to wrestle with day jobs and and problems <laughs> and things in our lives um, we wanted to go all the way um, with what we had and 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 we did in, in many ways anything you'd like to add yeah uh, obviously we had to to choose and many times and we we are only three guys, <laughs> and yeah. we had to learn along the way many things, yeah. many yeah. things, and... and each of us has a specific role. So there's just one programmer, one art director, and one story writer. So uh, everything is done by a person in his field, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so and and we are also playing a lot with uh, lateral thinking and uh, tropes from video games. So we had to make sure. 
that the game remained uh, friendly towards a player that did not uh, know yeah, understand no. the rules behind our concept. Uh, we had to learn a lot about game design and we studied a lot about game design to be able to keep up yeah. with the demands of our of our ourselves. ourselves. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, but I yeah, we, yeah, yeah. No, I believe right. that one of the most important things that kept us going in the last years was the the events where we uh, we attended many events here in Italy and also uh, in some international like the EGX yeah. uh, uh, rest uh, in London. Yeah. And we we always had a great uh, feedback from the players playing the game, and that keep us kept yeah, us that, very that motivated uh, uh, yeah. to to proceed with our development. So yeah, I think that that, that that had uh, a real big role in our uh, yeah. development in in these years. It kept it, it kept us going. Yeah, surely. Yeah. Yeah. The fact and that also that feedback. Yeah. And also we learned, of course, a lot. We. We made many changes after each event we we attended. Yeah. We attended, yes. With feedback yeah. from, With the feedback players, from the yeah. player, we iterated yeah. through the process of taking a level, having having people play it, and uh, and uh, and adapting to their feedback. Uh, that played a lot. Uh, Obviously, with uh, with the virus and everything, uh, that mm. uh, came to an halt. Okay, came to a halt. Yeah. <laughs> so, unfortunately, we had to to count on our own and our own uh, uh, instinct. Yeah, yeah, that we had developed by going through through so many hoops. Uh, uh, so the 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 later parts of the game, we kind of had an idea already of what people uh, were thinking uh, going through the game. Because we had tested so much of it, um, so we had developed some a keener sense of what the player think, of how the player thinks like. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and hopefully that uh, has has helped us finish the game in the in the in a way players will enjoy. It's definitely interesting about trying to get like all these aspects into the game and like i was looking at the store page itself and like i see a lot of screenshots that are more like rpg conventional that kind of thing i guess without spoiling things too much for people watching what other can you give us like little teasers for other like game mechanics or systems that people are going to run into yeah terrabane is mainly an, uh, an adventure uh, mm -hmm. game with puzzles and that's the main thing about it i think yeah it's not uh, really an rpg although it yeah. does borrow a lot of elements it from looks that. like an rpg <laughs> but uh, stati statistics and builds and work. Uh, yeah all, they're not uh, really all numbers are not working and so the player has to use different things to advance through the game and all all the battles, uh, the the JRPG like battles, are uh, usually puzzled to be solved in, in other ways, other uh, than fighting or other than using a sword. And uh... Uh, so mainly, uh, it is uh, an adventure with puzzles. Uh, but we have mini games uh, here and there. And what mm, what we usually thought about was okay. So we are adding a stealth a stealth uh, mechanic here. Uh, what we want is to to turn it upside down, so to make something that doesn't work like a stealth uh, game, or the opposite of how of how it should work normally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, for example, there I can give a, a practical example. There are cameras like in uh, Metal Gear Solid, mm -hmm. and when you step inside a camera, then you are not seen because the cameras are bugged. And when you step outside the area, you are seen because the areas are inverted. <laughs> and, and so you have to do jump from one camera to the next. Um, another, yeah. another great example for me of a mechanic that we invented for the game that uses a bug but is not taking from another, from another game, like in this example I just, I just gave, uh, is... There is a place in the in in the game where you need to find a way past a door, and you're missing the lever that makes you open the door. So you just get a hook from an NPC and hook a piece of the tile set of the of the map that has a lever and move and it. Move it and bring it with you. <laughs> 
uh, and paste the place it, you need it. Yeah. and paste <laughs> it on the place you need it, and you break the game, but you repair <laughs> it in the place where you need it, so you can get past the door. Um, so we kind of introduce all of these strange things uh, that we came up with. Some of them make reference to games that exist. Some of them are original okay. things that we th we tried out. Um, so it's kind of a patchwork. <laughs> and for people watching this report, they know that I tend to find bugs and break games just naturally on my own. So this sounds like this may be the perfect game <laughs> for me to show off on stream. <laughs> Collecting bugs is nice. certainly an important part of the game. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the real ending of the game is unlocked by uh, looking for the bugs and trying to fill <laughs> your bug list. <laughs> so... Yeah. In, there's there's a fake ending uh, in the mid in, in the yeah, middle of the, middle game. of the game, but the true end uh, is unlocked by finding bugs. Yeah. <laughs> I guess uh, one question that I want to ask the three of you, and this I always like to ask when I talk to international guests. For me, is what is like the game dev space in Italy like? Because I'm sure for a lot of my audience watching. They probably don't have first-hand experience. A lot of mine are usually United States, or I do have international guests, especially, or international followers as well, but I don't know if I have too many out of Italy. Hmm. I, I'd say our um, scene is very... Um, it's very present, actually, in Italy. We have a lot of talented developers. Uh, we don't have a lot of infrastructure or investment or... Mm. Um, universities teaching the yeah. the the, um, the job, way. yeah. But our um, our scene, we have seen many people uh, starting this kind of um, uh, yeah of, of experience of experience, and and I think things are moving up some some somehow. Yeah. yeah, we have many yeah. many talented they, people they trying are, they to bring are, together, yeah. Yeah, things are, are really better, even uh, if we compare that, them with um, 2016 when we started yeah. the and we started game development. Yeah, yeah we, we have some big realities in, in Italy. For example, there's Ubisoft to Milan, mm -hmm. and there's Milestone, which is, uh, does the uh, MotoGP, uh, the Motor Show um, Championship. Mm -hmm. And so there are big rea realities, but uh, yeah. mo most of them are in developing right now. Yeah, mm. and, and there are even smaller teams that have yeah. achieved a success. For example, uh, Remothered is a, is a game uh, mm. that comes from Italy. It's a horror game that's been doing quite a few rounds uh, internationally. Martha yeah. is dead. Martha is dead. dead. Um, there are a few studios here that really know their stuff. They're really trying to to go towards a um, double A kind of kind of feeling, you know, yes. More than more than just indie, you know. Mm. That's they're aiming to to go up in yeah. the in the chain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's good to hear. I think I did play Remothered at one point, and. It's good to hear that there are that the uh, Italian game dev space has grown in the last like five six years, and yeah. it is definitely interesting. I guess as another side question, obviously with everyone dealing with COVID and the pandemic, has that impacted like how you guys have been running or doing Bit Nine, or have things haven't really changed that much? They did change. They changed because we could we cannot attend something that was. <laughs> a very important part of game dev life, which was the events, the people, uh, contact, direct contact with the public, which was very strong here in Italy. Not only with the public, even with the, the publishers and, uh, and, and big names of the industry, like Nintendo or Sony. Yeah, uh, passed through Milan for many things. In COVID in some way helped us in this mm -hmm. because uh, everything switched to 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 online meetings to online meetings that uh, i think reduced the 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 gap between uh, indie developers and and big names of the industry yeah it was kind of a, a of a double edged sword uh, mm. in some ways we our team could not meet face to face for a very long time 
we had to work using Discord, using many other tools uh, because of the virus. In other ways, it has advantaged us because we managed to reach our publisher thanks to, yeah, to thanks this to shift games. in uh, in uh, in in the way things are reachable. For example, we for to reach a publisher like we we managed probably before the virus, we would have to go to at, a big convention at in at least to Gamescom. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. in Germany or somewhere else. Uh, now all of those costs are non-existent because we we can reach them through mail they're more receptive to calls and all of that uh, so yeah it it was a shift it, it, it a changed shift. many things some positive some negative yeah i know like around here we've been having uh, we just had gdc in person i think it mm -hmm. will be like a week ago at the time of this recording and even then, it's still, like, at least for myself and for a lot of, like, smaller developers, like, and people in the industry, like, it's still, like, very not worth to do a lot of, like, long-distance traveling. And mm -hmm. it's definitely a challenge, I think, for everyone, especially for any developers who aren't, and for anyone who's, like, not kind of living in, like, the major, like, game dev spaces around the world. It can be a challenge in terms of, like, getting your name out there and getting known. I think at least with the virtual side, I think that at least helped out a lot of us in terms of, hey, we can just chat through Zoom or Discord or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 So, uh, getting back to Terrabane, I guess in terms of the idea, like what attracted the three of you to making this your first commercial project? I, I think Lucas should be the one answering this question because it's his fault. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we, we mentioned before our starts with mobile games uh, that we developed. At that time, we were just uh, me and Matteo <laughs> yeah. developing our first game. It was not and, there. Uh, yeah, and um, basically, the, since uh, we, we are not a background in game development, we, were not, uh, we have not the, the expertise to, to do that, and we were just starting using the, the engine Unity. So uh, basically, we actually added many bugs in our games. So we, we thought that some of them were actually funny and, and uh, funny to, to see, funny to play. And so um, came to our mind uh, the, the idea to create a, a game where bugs were the main uh, tool yeah. to proceed and to, to make choices and to to go on with the, with the narration, so. Yeah, that was an idea coming from Luca. Yeah, from, yeah, yeah. because we yeah. noticed. I didn't want to say it, but. <laughs> I didn't want to, yeah, uh, even back then, we've always been a, a very uh, comedic oriented trio. Uh, it, we're just a, a group of friends. <laughs> and, um, and we used to joke about our own games breaking up in strange ways, and they became kind of memes circling around the office. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it, be, it it was kind of natural to do yeah and we noticed this potential for comedy that bugs naturally have and uh, meta games yeah. and, and usually so, usually meta games are used for horror or for scary situations mm -hmm. and we wanted to do something that it was was lighthearted light and, and, and funny fun. all you know, yeah all through the experience the, yeah. the very same thing mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and like with building the game around bugs and breaking, as you said, it's more of an adventure game at its heart rather than other genre conventions or other gameplay systems. I guess with the adventure gameplay side of things, that's another genre that we've certainly seen some very interesting things in the last five years or so. Like, it suddenly have like waxed and waned. I guess uh, for the three of you, I guess from your own perspectives, like, what do you think about the adventure genre today and, you know, making a game in it? Well, I, oh, I'm talking for me here. Mm -hmm. I, I really love adventure games. Uh, back to, back to LucasArts like adventure games or Sierra's. Uh, Old text adventures. Yeah. Which we referenced inside the game. And I still love them, uh, even in VR. <laughs> even in VR. Or very modern things like... Um, I don't know. I'm thinking about Heavy Rain and uh, 
um, yeah, more recent titles like yeah, Detroit, Detroit, Detroit was, become was very stunning to me uh, on the va variety of things you could do while still maintaining a very uh, coherent, yeah, coherent uh, storyline. Story. Uh, it's a genre that surely I love uh, deeply. Yeah, we all do. Um, I think, like all the ancient uh, genres of video games out there, um, it, it's ripe for something that it, we could see as critique. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Terrabane is um, an example not of trying to advance the art, but of trying to make a critique of it. Um, to, to my opinion, we have reached a certain point where we've said a lot of things with, with some of the genres that have become so uh, important, so very much utilized or, ex or explored in other contexts, in very different contexts. And we've reached the tipping point where now we need to critique them and, and look at them and maybe uh, eliminate some of the sanctity uh, around mm. some tropes, around some things that we are very used to seeing and taking for granted. So, in a way, Terrabane is not trying to advance the art. It's trying to looking to look at it, and and yeah, and, and make fun of no, it. So we, <laughs> yeah, and we try to to put many many things from our own adventure in in it. Yeah, okay. our, our own perspective. It's a game that is is talking about um, you know the relationships that exist between players and developers and the community yeah. and the narration around the games <laughs> uh, it's kind of a main point of terrabin yeah mm. the game around the game yeah. and we've seen a, like several like indie games in the past like five years i really or I even more than that that have like try to have those like fourth wall breaks in games uh, the stanley powerball is probably yeah. one of the most famous examples um there's one thing it's called there is no game that came exactly. out a few years ago as well, and yeah. it is definitely like a, a very, I think a very a well a known pot that people can uh, pull from in terms of, I guess like trying to break these tropes into their own thing, and one thing that I want to kind of uh, clarify or want to kind of expand on what you just said about kind of the adventure genre itself and trying to. I guess ignore or you know make fun of some of its tropes like that's been something that's been in the back of my mind uh in the last few years because i've spoken to a lot of adventure game developers here in the united states we had a round table like three years ago it's at this time with some of them and one of the things that they were talking about from their perspective like they were trying to obviously make like you know serious adventure games or you know more traditional without having that breaking element to it and there was always that challenge of, I think, making it appealing to new people. And I think that's always been, like, one of the major uh, failings or one of the major challenges of the adventure genre. That it's so old or it's so set in its ways that I think it's very hard to get new people. Because, you know, if you're focusing on very elaborate puzzles or, you know, text parsers or, like, that kind of crazy design... It's hard to make that appealing to new people. I think the same could be of the modern retro like RPG movement with developers making games that are like simulating, you know, like Apple II software or, you know, uh, Ultima, the very first one of that. So for the three of you with Terrorbane, I guess, how did you try to like balance, we want to make an adventure game, but we also want to make a game that it's not going to be something that if you hate adventure games or if you haven't grown up playing it, that you can still enjoy and experience. Uh, I think we mainly went about just erasing the entire point and click from it. <laughs> um, we tried to make it as natural as it was walking around and, and looking at funny stuff. Um, yeah. Our main concern oh. for it was to, to to be for it to be funny. Yeah, the laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Our game was profoundly comedical. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, of, and of our course. yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Of, that... of of course you you need to to solve puzzle. Of course you you need to make maybe backtrack sometimes. But still, uh, while you do this, you you are supposed to laugh at something because you find something uh, funny. 
even in a dialogue or uh, just uh, an NPC or something that should um, uh, make you laugh. So, so I want to make is, clear, yeah. it's not, uh, we take a lot of inspiration from, well, adventure and comedy go, go hand in hand. <laughs> Let's talk about yeah. uh, Monkey Island, for example. Um, we're not trying to make you laugh with just what you read or having a character be uh, very funny. Uh, we try to make you um, laugh with what you meet, with what you see. Trying to break the game around you is a way to make, an, make the player see a new nuance of what the interaction there is. Um, uh, how can I describe it better? Um, anything well, yeah, more? Of, of, yeah, of course we use uh, bugs, bugs as the main uh, element to, um, yeah. to make but, us different from other adventures. So uh, we, we want the, the player uh, enjoying himself while he breaks the game or see something that doesn't work. So yeah. this is, I think that is kind of unique in Terror Rain. Uh, yeah. We we try to to set up the um, the developer as a some kind of antagonist for the player in mm -hmm. right at the beginning. Uh, he's very uh, upsetting, uh, uh, at least in the intro of the game. The inspiration and the father figure of Terrabane is of course Stanley Parable yeah. with its narrator. So and the the developer was born as a narrator, but then. It kind of took another shape. Uh, what we tr are trying to do with the with the developer is to create an antagonist and then break even that rule. Um, the developer plays a very important role that I don't want to spoil, but there is an entire section where he just disappears, for example. And uh, that is part of a process that should create a journey for this character. Um, at least... Yeah, at least in our in our minds, in our design. Uh, and I don't want to spoil the whole message behind the game because the developer, of course, is very much part of that message. Uh, but there is a change there. And that's what what I was trying to say is that we tried to create a drive for for the player uh, to to be able to enjoy finding bugs, but also a goal. So I'm gonna show the developer that this game is broken. <laughs> um, and that's what we hope can bring the players, bring the players uh, to to the to the real ending of the game. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess in terms of like the challenge of Terrain again with adventure game design with puzzles, we've seen all manner of difficulties from some that are just super simple to the old school, you know, hair ripping out of mists and kind of like the golden age of King's Quest. With uh, Terror Bane, I guess in terms of difficulty, for people listening to us or watching, I guess, where would you say the game would fall? Like, is it more like in terms of puzzle designs on the easier side, medium, or, you know, super challenging? It's kind of difficult to say. Yeah. Uh, we mainly um, did what we thought was best. Our design idea is was to make it simple that you could enjoy it just walking through it uh mm -hmm. but then again we did not want we we are playing with ideas we're playing with uh we want the player to to break the game and we don't want this to be just a simple follow the instructions we want the player to think about it so there are places where it requires lateral thinking mm -hmm. it requires you thinking about the situation so there are walls, and and also we try to 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 help the players uh, think like us, and so the game the game needs to to teach them something and to to tell them uh, you need to think this in, in another way. Mm. So um, we tried to to strike a balance uh, between yeah. between doing strange things that they are not <laughs> expecting to do, but in the same times we we wanted you to do it those, to do those, those things, things and, and not get stuck and not get stuck so, and be yeah. able to enjoy yourself and just yeah. jump from one crazy thing to the next uh, and so there are places in which we maybe um hold the hand of the player a little more 
and, and places there where are places we... in which we uh, leave the player maybe we... wondering what to do for a little yeah um, yeah. I, I think the, the, the idea behind it is probably just a, a single a single thing uh, uh, the player needs to to not be guided when the the thoughts require some kind of of lateral way to to resolve the situation otherwise just explore uh, and you'll find funny stuff <laughs> um I, I i hope i was able to to convey this correctly it, it's not it's not easy to we're, we're yeah, obviously the, yeah. yeah looking for for the feedback of, from the players on many places in the game we um we obviously don't we don't really know what uh, what works and what what uh, the response what, will be from yeah. the player. Yeah. Although yeah. we did test it with a lot, with a lot of players. Yeah. yeah. As many the, people we could. We could. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the the very short answer to your question, I believe it's uh, it, we are going we we went to an easy to medium I think yeah. uh, approach in uh, in the puzzles. Uh, we were not very evil <laughs> in the <past. laughs> with the players. Exactly. In the with the players, yeah, and especially uh, as far as, as gameplay concerns, because we we don't want people to be stuck because they are not able to resolve, to to play the game oh, in a certain yeah. particular way. For example, there's a section that is a rhythm game. Of course, uh, we we wanted it to be available and uh, accept acceptable for all the players, so they can. Oh, there's a way you play. can yeah. Yeah. But or, there are or, or, or a high or a shooter score. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a few action mini games <laughs> throughout. Yeah. Yeah, we change gameplay as many times as we can, and it was kind of a complex answer. I I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's complex in our case. Yeah. <laughs> Now, uh, with Terraband, I know you guys have a demo out for it, and I think I may have tried the demo for at one of the next fests that was out, I think, a few years ago. Was that up for one of those? Yeah, it I was in summer. Uh, it yeah. was in summer 2019? Yeah. No, 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 no. The, the Steam Fest was last year. Steam Fest. Uh, yeah. Yeah, last year. 2021. 2021. Yeah. I know the last, like, two, three years have been very crazy for everyone. We've all lost track. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, can't believe it's yeah. been two years. It's <laughs> yeah. unbelievable. It's happened. Yeah. A lot has happened. A lot has happened, and then sti it's still, it's still <laughs> after continues to happen. <laughs> Who knows what's next? Yes, I guess as a, a, a smaller development team, like how was it like putting a uh, Terrabane on Nextfest, or like having like that demo up, getting feedback, like from like a studio reception? Like, what did you guys find? It was kind of like attending an event to, for us. Uh, it was easier in the sense that we did not have to stand there. But it, the kind of people that noticed the game was kind of the same. It, we, it was very important for us uh, for wish lists. Uh, attending the, the, the event yeah, helped us a lot. Uh, gaining attention for the, for the, the title, yeah. I think. Or... Putting up a live feed of our game going, I think that helped us a lot. This you... kind of, of uh, events on store pages are maybe the best, uh, you know, way to to attract people to the to the page and and to actually turn interest in wish lists. And and it gave us a lot of of data uh, or, mm. and and of hope, <laughs> yeah. obviously, uh, yeah. for the game. Of course. Events in person are better in the way that you can yeah. talk with people and get yeah. to know your players. Humanly. 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 <laughs> but for uh, the studios, are these kind of, of, of yeah. digital events are also very important. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And with coming up with the demo for the game, I think that's always a very interesting challenge for developers, especially if you're dealing with something that's more story-dependent, more linear, like an adventure game. How did you guys decide like what you wanted to be in the demo? And for people listening to us or watching us record right now, that the demo for Terrorbane is still up. You have the kind of like the introduction version of it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
It has um, the whole, yeah, the introduction of the game is actually in the demo. So you mm -hmm. can play a part of the game uh, in the way it is then in the, the full game. In the full game. Um, then it kind of branches out and becomes its own thing. We, but... wanted, we wanted the players to be able to, to try the game and see if it was for them. Mm -hmm. Because it's, um, it's something that we are doing and it's not really something that exists in any other game. Yeah. yeah. Many things that we tried out, we, we tried them out. And so we, it, since this, the game is so strange, uh, we know we had to have a tool for people to get to, to know the game before they, they yeah. could buy it, they could approach it. it because it well, looks like a JRPG, and it's yeah. not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you've got yeah. to try it out for yourself to understand. When, when you get to the first intro scroll and the developer tells you, why did you skip the intro scroll? I did not want that. That is the moment that tells you, wait, mm -hmm. this is not the game I was expecting. And uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty important. Right? It's important to have a free way to, to get into yeah. the game. Uh, yeah, yeah. So to try it out and to think, and, yeah, well, I, I want to play this game or, uh, or not. Or not. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it for me or yeah. not. Yeah, yeah. I, be I believe in our, in our case, the, the trickiest part was to uh, give also in the demo as the final product, the choice to the player, because uh, making a smaller version of Terrorbin uh, at the re brings the risk of doing something linear, something that uh, yeah. the player um, that the player can play from start to end, but uh, without not making problems. choices, not branches, not something like that. And uh, so that's the reason why the, the introduction version at the first part of the game, which is the actual part of the game, the, the actual first part yeah, actually, of the game. Yeah. So, so they can choose uh, which path to follow. Yeah. Uh, and, and, they the, yeah and they the understand the, how the game works. Mm -hmm. So the, it tells you exactly how the game will There's, there's a bug list uh, to, in the to demo complete. that you can complete and, and get a little uh, reward for it. And it works much more, yeah, much like we want the the, the players to play the, the full game. The full game, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind mm -hmm. of, a, of a snippet to get you un to understand the formula. And uh, also, it, it gave us a tool to to know if uh, if players were enjoying it and and were finding it funny, and and it kept us going because the demo was was always well received. Not many know this, but that demo has seen a lot of versions yeah. because it was actually <laughs> the first prototype for the game that evolved into a demo that evolved into a game. <laughs> uh, <laughs> kind of a strange. Then we took it again and, and put many yeah, things in it. That are the demo you're game. playing now is very different from the one that it yeah. was in 2016, but um, it, it contains the same premise, the same DNA. And then... Yeah, so it's it has the same structure at least. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like trying to get like when we have games like this that they don't really follow like the normal conventions of what you see. Like we said with stuff like uh, there is no game or the Stanley Parable, and I think there's probably a few that I'm forgetting off the top of my head right now of games that you oh, or the stuff like Daniel Mullins. Have you heard of him? Who does like Pony Island, Inscription, oh, yeah, 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 Inscription. Yeah. Yeah, there's always that I think risk when you kind of try to break the conventions that people are expecting, and I think with the adventure genre in particular, that's a very dicey point of view or very dicey kind of situation because a lot, as I'm sure the three of you are aware of, I'm sure as everyone watching, the adventure genre is very rooted in terms of what the mechanics are, what are the conventions going to be. You know when you play an adventure game, you're going to be solving a puzzle. You're going to be watching or listening to a lot of dialogue. And when you try to break those conventions, or you introduce something that is not normally for that genre, you can always run that risk of alienating like those fans. Like If somebody wants to play an adventure game and they load the title and it's like, wait, this is an RPG, or this is yeah. a first-person shooter, or anything like that, it can tend to annoy them. And it is, I think, a very hard line for a lot of developers who are trying to do something different in this space to walk. It's a very thin line, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. uh, we added minigames, for example, in, in the mix, <laughs> and action minigames, too. Uh, 
and we don't we don't really know if a public that that likes adventure games will be happy with with those. Yeah. For example. For example. Uh, or um, and we and we chose very rooted genres because uh, even JRPG is is one of those genres that has very strict rules, rules that you need to follow. Yeah. yeah. Um, what what we were trying to do is uh, we we need genres that have very known rules so that we can exploit the expectations for uh, them yeah and the, subvert the, the expectations and we we did a lot of uh, jrpg battles and none of them works yeah, none of them works in the way an rpg does so you you don't you don't level in this game you don't I think I can add something to this point uh, by explaining one of one thing that is only a fear for now, maybe mm -hmm. a, a, a kind of a worry. Uh, it's nothing that we're seeing right now yet, uh, but we are worried that our game has taken kind of a um, a brave um, risk in changing the uh, structure of how you finish a game. Um, our game has a normal ending and then a true ending that you unlock through the bug list. Um, in that way, the normal ending is very close to the beginning. Uh, so... Um, because in, in our mind, that's the end of the, the game of, of the developer. The, 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 the developer it's is not the, the ending of Terrorbane. Yeah, and um, and so when players get to that A to B, it's, they, it, it's the rule that it's it's done. <laughs> you don't have to do anything else. <laughs> and we we made the game way thicker than it is long. <laughs> and so you you actually we encourage you to go back and replay the sections and to find different different, different ways to play the section. And when I tell the player go and find different things, they maybe picture in their minds that. If they try something different, they're gonna hear a different line, and then everything's gonna be the same. And in some no. cases, it is like that. But we have very different uh, sections of the game. You can story progression you can enter through bugs, and that's uh, what the game actually is. So from the beginning to the end, you see four stages, but there are actually twelve stages out there you can find. Mm -hmm. And um, and so our worry is we broke that rule. Will they notice? Will they mm -hmm. know? Will they find out that there are our our structure, our gameplay loop is different from the normal genre? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a risk. It's will. a risk. But I but I think that uh, in indie uh, development, uh, it's important and maybe easier to take a risk. Mm -hmm. And and I think that. While AAA game cannot afford to take these kind of risks, um, indie developers can, can somehow. And so they can bring something new to the table. And they don't know if what they bring is good or, or if it works until players actually enjoy, enjoy it. Enjoy it and then... Uh, but um, yeah, I think it's part of what indie does best. Mm -hmm. uh, to try different and even uh, maybe... Uh, risky things risky or wrong yes mm -hmm. and i think what you said about like knowing the genre is very important to this because there is a very big difference between somebody you know trying to break an adventure game or break a first person shooter has no experience in that genre versus somebody who is well acquainted with the genre conventions with the norms what works what doesn't work and then is trying to make something like purposely you know against you know breaking the mold in that respect and i think as you guys said like with the independent space in general like this has been one of the advantages of being able to do something different and say you know this is not a normal first person shooter this is not a normal adventure game and kind of run with that idea whereas some a major company would never be able to take that risk and say we're going to release a rpg but no way it's actually a, a city builder or a first person mm -hmm. shooter yeah. Uh, what becomes a recipe for disaster for <laughs> games with expectations, it becomes a worthy risk to take yeah. for uh, for indies uh, that are trying to leave their mark and and and, and strike oh, gold. Yeah. Try to to do something different to bring mm. something new. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I, I believe it's also the the coolest part of it because yeah. we, yeah. we always <laughs> saw that uh, um, in, in, uh, in during the events when we could do the, them, we always uh, um, invited the players to play the game, but we didn't tell them what to expect and what to, yeah. what to see. And so they started the game and the first time they they saw that something is different than the, the developer is coming and mm -hmm. that uh, it's yeah. a, a game about bugs. Uh, there you yeah. can see their surprise and their, uh, yeah. and we play with their expectations. So I think that that's the coolest part of it. Yeah, it's the coolest part. In a way, in a way, indie games are 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 more in touch with the art in the in the video game genre. Uh, although, of course, there is a lot of art in video games in general. Uh, it is an art, in our opinion. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, but but indie games can take that risk that artists usually usually take. Um, yeah. To do something that is yours, uh, hoping other people will actually enjoy it. There's yeah. authorship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Mm, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, and I guess like with getting feedback from people, especially showing it to adventure game fans and people who are, again, more accustomed to the normal, I guess, genre conventions... What was like their feedback? Like, what did you take from people playing Terrabane and you know, good, bad, or indifferent in terms of like how you refined it over the years? Well, it, it was a very important process. Um, what we found out is that people react very differently to do the same thing. Uh, mm -hmm. But to, from what we learned from that is that the game needs to be adaptable. It is an interactive experience. Uh, I know so this might sound very banal, maybe, uh, mm -hmm. but it, it, taking um, taking command of this of this thing of this interaction requires you to understand your player way deeper deeper than you usually would as a consumer. Uh, so you sit back and watch them play, and you've made this level, and you think you've thought about everything. Mm -hmm. uh, they always do the thing that you never thought, of. thought about. Yeah, yeah. and no, no, you've probably heard of this every time. But every time I say this, I now see that player doing that stuff that I would never anticipate. It's different, uh, um, and so seeing them actually do those things and incorporating that in our design and seeing what wouldn't work first person and. Uh, and see and deciding no this i'm gonna they no, they don't like it i'm gonna keep it because it encourages another kind of of uh, of uh, reaction, reaction. Or, yeah. we want to keep that reaction even if it's no we don't want to um cancel every kind of rage every <laughs> kind of of <laughs> mistrust every kind of we want to le walk the fine line let's make it more adhesive to the idea we want to reach. Um, well, obviously, always, yeah, we, we care, we care a lot, obviously, uh, yeah. uh, about uh, player feedback. enjoyment and, player and feedback. Enjoyment. Um, and, and but player enjoyment is achieved not only through making everything easy or everything go smooth; it's achieved through a balance. And so you. Well, the game talks about this in some way. It's a major point. There's a major point in which uh, uh, the player is free. Don't spoil. To to <laughs> try to put up a game, to try to yeah, create, create a <laughs> game, their own game. What we were trying to say with that was, um, we as player have a lot of things we want in the game, and we think that very good things put together <laughs> are gonna become even better. But it's not that simple. It's not uh, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, from a developer point of view, uh, yeah, you have to make choices and you have to to uh, sacrifice some to sacrifice some some freedom from from the players mm -hmm. too. It is a machine. It has constraints and it needs to have some. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you need to have like that kind of established baseline, especially if you're trying to break things beyond that. Because if you just like give the player a hundred different things, they're just gonna be wondering, you know, 
what the heck am I supposed to be focusing on right now? And I guess in terms of like onboarding or you know getting people like into or acclimated to uh, Terrabane, how was that process in terms of iterating on the opening to make sure that someone can load the game and go, okay, I you know I know something is yeah. weird here, but I at least understand how I'm going to control it. We were very lucky because the first thing we thought was actually very good at doing that. Uh, our entire demo is structured around the introduction to the game. And the introduction is literally a scroll with the lore from the games slowly scrolling up. And you start the game right there. But uh, as you do, a giant button with press X to skip uh, glows. And, and tells you that you should be skipping it. And the, the scroll is very slow. And the very first moment of the game show is very irritating. It's very strange. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> in, it yeah, creates... In 2020s. Uh, yeah, <laughs> why am I watching something so boring? So <laughs> you skip it, and the developer immediately gets angry at you. And so, at that moment where the developer says... Why have you skipped the, the... Everyone understands what's the joke. Every, uh, at least they should understand why we, well, we chose... To, why we chose to... To, 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 yeah, to, 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 to play bore with, you. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. if you decide to read the entire scroll, on the other hand, a small uh, little um, an ach an achievement, achievement unlocks yeah. and tells you, epic patience, you read the boring intro scroll. So yeah. whatever you choose, you we tell you this is a joke, but only after you've, you've been through a grueling kind of experience. It, it's <laughs> short. We make sure that it's the right amount of, of uh, boring, boredom, yeah. the right amount yeah. of anger. <laughs> also, if you manage, if you want to read it and that all the lore in, in this strange intro actually is the lore. It, the game, actually it's, makes actually sense. Yeah. it's not just wasting your time. Yeah. But it's the presentation. It's mm -hmm. literally a moment built to get you into the game, and it's the first one. We we try to 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 do thing to do this thing many in many places, many right? other places during the game, and uh, uh, the scroll is probably the most um, the most tested one, the most uh, yeah. the one that went through the most yeah. iterations is the pure. One. It was there from the beginning, uh, the very first demo we, we brought to an event and then we started the development uh, in, in two months earlier <laughs> than that. And, yeah. and there we realized how strong it was as an introduction. All right. Yep. Yeah, and again, like trying to have these conventions and set and like kind of almost like reading the player know what's going to you know make them annoy or make them want to click on something is definitely a challenge with these kinds of games it's a challenge you, it's, you've yeah. got to ask them you've got to see for um, first hand and you'll get to the player that actually doesn't find it uh, boring and uh, <laughs> wants to read wants the intro, read the intro. <laughs> yeah that's, that, that's it, it happens and it's something that we did not think of yeah, at, yeah. at the beginning at the for beginning. example uh, it's a good percentage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's strange. Yeah, we were we were thinking originally that nobody would 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 read it, but we found out that kind of fifty fifty actually yeah. wants to know the lore, even if it's strange or dumb and clearly wrong. Um, so we, we, what we tried to do was to give uh, something to everyone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and adapt and adapt to what we saw was the reaction, the the true reaction from the audience. Mm -hmm. So I think with that, I'm trying to think if there's any other gameplay or design-related questions that I have for the three of you. If there's anything that we didn't touch on with regards to the development of Terrorbane, uh, uh, feel free to uh, bring it up. Um, I don't know. It's been a very long journey. <laughs> I think the most... Maybe the less talked about uh, epic <laughs> an indie game go through is probably the search for... Uh, it's everything that is, at, is outside game development. Game development. But it's still very crucial for for having a game coming out on platforms, platforms and yeah. with, yeah. with uh, support to different languages and 
-hmm. there's a lot to be to be done in that so uh, uh, andrea took part of uh, of uh, writing a lot of emails and mm -hmm. having a lot of exchanges with and a lot of conversations like and we're having Luca now. Luca too obviously took part of this and yeah, we all have a, events. We all have a, a very uh, important niche in creating the game experience, but we also have a very important job outside of the game mm -hmm. in reaching out to third parties, reaching out to, for example, finding a publisher. That was a very long journey. It was a yeah. very difficult one too. Um, but it was exactly as important as nailing the intro. And uh, so yeah. mm, in that, that is kind of the less spoken a part yeah. of development, but it's also very important. Also Managing, setting up the company, yeah. mm -hmm. setting up the company, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Figuring yeah. out how to pay yeah. taxes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all those different yeah, yeah. things are very, very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, from the from the marketing part of view, uh, of course, uh, in the um, the last year uh, things uh, got very easier for us because uh, right now we have a. Um, a publisher, a Chinese publisher, which is called Whisper Games, that covers something, uh, some of those things. So Obviously. at least we we could focus more on the development itself yeah, and, and on it's polishing it's the game fun. and the adding the languages and and so on. And um, while they they were taking care of of those things, mm -hmm. so yeah, it was easier in the last month. That's to, part. And it's crucial. Uh, yeah. What what indie developers need to think is that you can't do the best game ever and then release it in an afternoon uh, hoping it will work because it's good cool. it's it's not yeah. only that it's not only that it's a long it's uh, a complex it, thing yeah i think it it never happens that way you you need to do many other things around it mm -hmm. yeah I and mean, that's what you, oh go ahead now, even if you have a very very good game uh, there have been very, very good games that uh, stayed silent for a long time. Um, I'm thinking about um, uh, Among Us, for example. For example. Yeah. It is a great game, obviously, but for many, for, for years, I for think. For years, it was, it, was, it was ignored by the public. And until it, it was, it, it was very lucky and, and came and came to the forefront and showed its potentiality, I yeah. think. Uh, but I think the vast majority of that kind of titles uh, remains in undercover. Yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. uh, and bridging that gap, managing to come through uh, is, is another almost as important as yeah. having a great game. And, yeah. Um, yeah. and it's all that extra stuff when it comes to game dev. I think a lot of first-time developers tend to struggle with, with the marketing, the PR side, and it is incredibly tough. Like I've, again, like for people listening, like they've heard the story many times over. I've interviewed so many developers, and there are a lot of amazing games. Excuse me, that they just come out and they disappear. Like yeah, it's. Yeah. And it is tough, I think. And it's become, I think, incredibly harder for games to kind of break out into the mainstream. Uh, you guys just mentioned Among Us. Like, they were a failure for, like, I think two to three years before yeah. it blew up. Like, what was it, like, 2021? Again, the years mean, like, nothing these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah we're yeah. in a space-time tunnel. Uh, yeah, it, it was fun. really scary indeed because we, we didn't want to... To waste all the years we invested in this project uh, and uh, release it as, as Matteo was mentioning, uh, uh, without any coverage, uh, any marketing, and so it was like uh, way, uh, throwing away all these years. All these years, all these years. Games. Per games was a very, a very fortunate and yet uh, happy thing to thing happen, that happened to us. To us. Yes, uh, they they helped us uh, shaping the game in in the form you you are seeing today yeah, yeah. without them i would not be voicing the dev yeah because mm -hmm. i it wasn't the plan originally i, I know how to speak in english sure but mm -hmm. um, i it, that doesn't necessarily mean that i'm all right to vo for voicing a character but they t <laughs> told me why don't you try and it 
It I hope it worked. Of course, I shouldn't be the player. <laughs> it yeah. should be the players. I hope it worked. Um, and we also find it really, really nice that the developer in the game is actually, <laughs> actually yeah, the one voiced who... <laughs> by one of the developers yeah. of the real game. So um, yeah. it adds a level of meta to it. To it yeah. Yeah. All right. I think with that, I am just about out of questions. I guess uh, one thing to ask the three of you, if you guys want to give any more shout-outs to the local uh, Italian game dev space, any other developers or people to take note of, uh, definitely feel free. Monkey Tales, a, a studio that makes uh, artsy uh, games about the culture here, in specifically in our region, mm -hmm. um, has made a game about uh, a lake. Oh. Um, where yeah, a, a town lake here in Italy, there's a town that has been uh, that's been um, covered by this lake it's called, it's called, by creating a dam. So it has disappeared, and it, and it is a great friend of ours. Um, there's uh, Trinity Studio who made the game about slap and beans, slap and beans about a, a legend of our uh, Italian filmmaking. Um, and, and Spencer, Spencer and, and Terence Terence Hill, Hill, two actors that are very famous here in Europe, um, and they made a game about them, and and they are very good. They're a great studio. Uh, they also made a, a new game um, called The Darkest Metro, Tales, which is a Metroidvania. Vania, yes, uh, very interesting, especially in the visuals. Uh, great guys, always helped us out. Uh, studio Evil, Studio, studio Evil. Evil, who made. Uh, Super Kane Magic Zero. It's a <laughs> very strange and, and funny game. That's it, apparently Italian love comedy. I can confirm it. Um, <laughs> they also yeah. helped us out as um, with advice. With advice is yeah. They were our senpais uh, <laughs> and helping us out shaping the studio. Um, anyone else? I would say Heartbeat Interactive with uh, the Doom and Destiny saga. I don't know if yeah. you know it, but it, it, it's a comedic uh, RPG. Mm -hmm. that is, uh, Which is truly... Yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a, a working RPG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, and uh, I would say Ivan Venturi. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's been working in the industry uh, for 20 years, I think. It's one of the first... Mm -hmm. uh, um, developer of game developer here in Italy. He started yeah. with the Very Amiga, clear. Amiga 500, <laughs> and yeah. um, helped us out with advice. Yeah, yeah, it's always uh, yeah bringing together teams and trying and creating to... new stuff and yeah. trying to to yeah. create. Yeah, he's really the matchmaker <laughs> yeah. of the entire. Uh, at least scene in, in the area here uh, near Bologna. Near Bologna, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we we don't want to forget anyone, but. Yeah, <laughs> in general, in general, we noticed that our community, our game dev com community here in Italy, is very um, ki um, kind and uh, yeah, yeah, in in giving advices and uh, part of their experience, sharing their experience. And, uh, I think that's very yeah, very beautiful. very positive environment. Welcoming, yeah, welcoming community here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For us, at least, we actually started in one of those events. Yeah, we, yeah, we found always a welcoming. Uh, you know, there are game jams and yeah, things like that, things yeah. like, <laughs> like everywhere in the world. Yeah, yeah. All right, so. I guess with that, one question I always like to ask developers, have you guys thought of what your next project will be? Are you still in just, you know, post-game release relaxation or, I guess, relaxation, no. air quote We're mode there? <laughs> We're tense like bowstrings. <laughs> uh, no, we released today, we have no idea what will happen tomorrow but but we know that we're working on adding new languages to the game already and we're hoping we we can think about portings to other platforms and and, and we'll move on uh, reacting to how the game is is received is received yes uh, we would really love to to do uh, a second terror game yeah uh, maybe we have with so many ideas and a little bit um uh, <laughs> Yeah, a little more deepness. Like, yeah. uh, how can I tell? Uh, how can I say this? We want the bugs to be 
even crazier and we <laughs> yeah, they yeah. are crazy here we we would really love to be able to expand this and do it better with we, more people yeah there's th we yeah. think there's something else we can say yeah. with Darabin, and hopefully we'll get there all right so for people watching right now what platforms is Terrabin currently available on pc and nintendo switch exactly. PC, pc through through steam, through steam. yeah okay yeah. All right. So I think with that, we can wrap things up for our chat. It's been a pleasure hanging with the three of you. My afternoon, oh, your wow. evenings. <laughs> uh, our, yeah, for us. Thank you for having us. Yeah, really, yeah, yeah, it, it was a pleasure. It's very nice to discuss these things. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes. A really nice chat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I guess, do you have anything you'd like to say to the fans watching or you know, something to wrap up the cast with? I'd say... If you want to make games, it's difficult, but it's <laughs> wonderful. We had so much fun. It, I know we're tired. We launched the game today. We're full of reports everywhere, <laughs> flying over. Yeah. But we really loved every minute of it. Even if we had to bleed it out of ourselves, uh, we had to work other jobs. We had to do many sacrifices. We would do so again. Um, we hope this uh, actually the player will be able to to get that this is a work of love in some way. In some way, yes. Yeah. Uh, not only obviously, obviously we thought it as a as a product also. And yeah, that is important to think it as a product, but it's also art. It's also we something know. that comes from the heart, yeah. um, and we try to put our hearts fully in the game. Uh, and I hope it shows. I just hope it shows. All right. Yep, yeah, and I do wish you guys the best of luck with uh, Terrabane. Uh, get some sleep after <laughs> this uh, cast. Yeah, if we can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll try, we'll try. yeah, we should definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, for people watching, in terms of social media, places to find you guys, stuff like that, if you have anything you would like to uh, broadcast or say, feel free. We've got a Discord. If you want to come meet us and chat with us, we, we participate a lot. Um, At least we try. <laughs> you can find it on our Steam page, um, the links and the env in the invites. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, uh, yeah. Instagram, and TikTok. TikTok or <laughs> the, uh, you you yeah, can find all the, all the links on terrorbane.com. Uh, yeah. And there you can find all our social media and the Discord channel too. That's the, the trailer of the game and the link to the stores. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, all, it's all there. <laughs> it's all there. <laughs> Come chat with us for it. All right. And uh, for people watching this recorded, there'll be links to everything down in the show notes. So be sure to check that out. And be sure to check out Terrabane as well. So, uh, guys, it has been an absolute pleasure hanging out with you. Again, best of luck with the release, and I'll be sure to check out for the upcoming uh, Indie Night Showcase. So I'm sure you guys can watch and see what bugs I can find with your game. <laughs> yeah. Let's say we are all bugs. Intended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Intended <laughs> bugs that yeah. we put in the game. <laughs> Thank right. you very much. Okay. Thank for having us. No problem. All right. Much. So... Uh, for people watching us right now, thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to check out Terrorbane. Again, you'll find links to everything down in the description. If you'd like to follow me on all my social media, there are links to that in the upper right. My Patreon, Discord, you can follow me on Twitter, and so on. Be sure to join the Game Wisdom Discord. And do all the liking, subscribing, and commenting here if you enjoy game design topics and interviews. With that said, come back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where he's in the on science of games. And until next time, take care. Bye. 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 Bye.